What's up on my Power Ass crew? Last week I showed you guys how to change out the oil pressure seating unit. So today I'm going to show you guys one, that that needle's rock steady, but two, I'm also going to show you guys what's inside of our oil pressure seating unit. I know that's got to be a curiosity question. It is for me. I've changed out countless of them, but I've never actually torn one apart to see what's inside of it. So one, you guys get to see them. my gauge is steady. Two, we're going to tear apart the oil pressure seating unit. I'll get it out in a minute. Now in the comments it was requested that uh, to do a cold start and a warmed up start to see the difference. Right now, I mean I just now walked outside, the Jeep is stone cold, hasn't even started yet this uh, today. So you guys are going to see one, the temp gauge is going to be, uh, obviously the Jeep's turned off right now. So the gauges are all laying flat. You're going to see how cold it is because it's just freshly started up. And I'm going to let it run for a while to warm up and we'll check the oil pressure again. So the key is on. Push it into clutch. And there's my oil pressure started up. She's stone cold right now. Come over here, see the temp. Temperature hadn't even moved. Like I said, it's first time today it's been started. So in the meantime, I'm gonna let her sit here run. It's probably close to like lower 90s right now. It's pretty daggone hot out here today. So this will give it an opportunity for it to warm up quickly and warm up a lot. But the hotter the engine gets, the more likely that the uh, oil pressure is gonna fluctuate because the hotter your engine gets, the thinner your oil gets. So uh, let's let her warm up and I'll come back and ch check the oil pressure again in a moment. She said about 195 right now, climbing. Oil pressure just a little below 40 pounds. Oh, and by the way, I checked the outside temperature. It's 91 degrees here with that real feel of 98 degrees. So to give you guys how hot it is here right now. And my temperature's climbing. It's probably about 200 right now. But we'll check back with it in a bit. Now after she's been sitting there idling probably close to 20 minutes or so, it's running about 215, 220 or so. Now this Jeep, this is about where it runs all the time. And no, it's not running hot, it doesn't puke water or anything like that. This is about where this rig runs when it's warmed up this hot, sitting still. Now once I get going down the road a little bit, it does cool down to about 210 ish or so. But the real subject is, boom, and there's more pressure. You see it's sitting rock steady, no fluctuation, no jumping, and I've been spot checking every so often between camera shoots. It has a fluctuated a bit, so it was in fact the oil pressure sending unit acting crazy. You see I can give it a little bit of gas and it jumps up there all smooth, cuts back down, settles back in place. So the oil pressure sending unit was the in fact the issue. So we, I got steady oil pressure in my rig. Now I get that some people are upset that I didn't show the gauge last week in the video, okay? I get it. But at the same time, even if I had reshot that gauge and stuck it in the video to make everybody happy to show the gauge, and I get it, I do, I totally understand it. Uh, Cause I like to see, okay, did changing that part fix it? But the problem with that what would have been, it only did it erratically. It would go for a day or two and act fine. Then it would act up for two or three days. It was just sporadic as to when it worked and when it didn't. Which led me to believe, even though I, on the last week's video, I went through all that commentary about, about the oil pump and the pressure release spring and all that kind of fun stuff. Even though I went through all that commentary, it was just a way of explaining different scenarios that could happen with oil pressure. Because of it being so erratic, I was 99.9% .9 sure that it was the fuel, the, uh, almost the fuel, the pressure sending unit for the oil. So after changing out, I drove it for a week, drive back and forth to work, and I used to have a 35 mile one way trip to work, and now I've only got about two miles. After the two miles, did I feel like it was going to give me an accurate representation as to whether it's fixed or not? Not really, because I didn't get a whole lot of road time back and forth to work. But there's been, I've taken a couple of, you know, going to movies and going to events, whatever, that it's been a couple of 35, 40 mile drives sitting in traffic and so on and so on to where I've had an opportunity to watch the gauge and see if it's going to be fixed. So throughout that week from last week when I released the video to you guys seeing this one, it shows that I, the, the oil pressure is steady. I've had no fluctuations, no issues. It does nothing weird anymore. So that for confirms that the oil pressure sending unit was in fact the issue. 
now that we got the follow-up video done showing the steady oil pressure let's have a little fun with this I've got the old oil pressure sending unit let's cut that rascal open and see what's inside of it because I've always been curious I've changed that many of them but I've never opened one up to see what's in it let's do this now because of the way this thing's built my plan is to simply grind all the way around through here which should separate the bottom here from the bell or can or whatever it is you want to call it what I'm not sure is that once this is separated, do I have wire or what's inside here that fits this to the inside of all the mechanisms inside here to allow it to separate? Don't know that yet. I may have to do something different, like you know, drill a hole in that right there. Who knows what? First things first, I'm going to grind this right here out and see what we get. Put on your hearing and your eye protection. Now look at that. That's 15 minutes worth of grinding. And now you made it halfway around because when you see through here, I still ain't exposed it all. That's some tough stuff. I ain't got time for all that. Break out the plasma cutter on it. I'm done. Burned the oil off anyway. Alright, now I can. Now we might be able to get somewhere after it cools down a little bit. Now that I've got that seam separated, I just took the wrench, put it right there a little bit, and tweaked it just a little and it popped in half here. But it looks like we also got to separate this out, which is a seam right there. It looks like we got something going on behind here, which is a seam right there. So, let me see if I can get that split apart real quick. I took my screwdriver and wedged it under, and it popped loose pretty easy. Uh, yeah, I need kind of, it's hot still, kind of. Well, give me another glove. separate that okay so it looks like oil gets injected inside there we got a membrane here so it looks like we got the oil gets injected inside here then we got a membrane right here that I'm assuming that it forces on that membrane because it kind of so you can hear it make a slight little pop of sound kind of like an oil can effect for those of you who know what that is old school oil cans uh, see if I get the membrane part now it's hard to do anything with gloves on okay there's the membrane separate it out which then I'm assuming at that point forces these little diaphragm fingers they don't flex very much ouch yep it's still hot and I'll grab it again okay so that moves a little bit okay, that don't do anything that don't move that just flexes and turns. Okay, let's see if we can get the other part of the part now. Let's see if I get lucky enough with the screwdriver without having to do any more grinding or cutting. It's still a little warm. Okay, it separates. 
and wedge it up a little bit enough to slide because you see you got a lot of little keepers right here for the locks but then we also got little tabs here prevents it from sliding forward okay as i noticed as i was taking my diamond cutter is a mess with this plate right here i'm realizing the whole thing's broken loose from the inside and now it's trying to move around a little bit so based on the movement i'm getting out of it and the pulling backwards and the movement from side to side i'm assuming it's still attached up into here so you see that's right here is just where the um, spade connector goes to your gauge so i'm assuming this plastic right here probably needs to go so i'm gonna cut that plastic out right there and that i'm assuming that should allow me to pull the electronics straight out the bottom of it so i'm gonna get rid of all this plastic and see where we go from there I took the grinder and grind all that plastic off the top. As soon as I did, I pushed on it a little bit, and there it is. Is it hot? Nope, it ain't hot anymore. No Out, but the top is. Hmm. Okay, so looks like what we got here. This. Okay, I went off camera and poked and prodded a little bit to kind of figure out what was going on. So what I've discovered is that this little plate right here, as the oil pressure increases, it's pushing up on this pan right here. Then as it pushes on that pan, it pushes on this little contact up inside here, which is actually kind of like a little rocker arm. When you push that little rocker arm with a screwdriver, you can see it moves just a little bit here. Okay. So what does that mean? Okay, watch this. Watch right there, them little gears. See the little gears turning? Then you got the spring-loaded arm over here, which pushes it back into its home position. But over here, we have a contact here and a little swinging electronic contact down inside there. You see how it swings upward like that right there? Because if you push it too far, that arm will hang up on top of that plastic right here ask me how I know oh, whoops so you see it swinging up and down like that so basically what it is it's kind of like having a uh, that's called a variable resist or potentiometer whatever the whatever geeky name you want to call it but basically it's like if you got a dimmer switch in your house how you do the rotary knob that makes you light you know brighter dimmer whatever as you turn the little rotary knob this is basically what it's doing it's increasing decreasing resistance that goes to your gauge that tells you how much uh, oil pressure you have You see right there, that little contact is kind of worn out. So it looks like on this side over here, you see the little white band. I bet you it's where the other side of the resistor is that's making this contact, looks like. Because it's way down side there now. Because there ain't nothing on this side of the switch, because this is basically just a variable resistor switch. I've always been curious how the inside of those things work, and now I know. So I've already jacked it up because when I bent it, when I pushed it up like that a minute ago, and it's set up on top of this, apparently bent it because I took and tapped it and it dropped back down the side there, but now it's dropping back down on its own. It wouldn't look good anyway, so who cares? So it's kind of like having your radio knob, your old school radio knobs, how you turn it to turn your volume up and down. Or your, like I said, your dimmer switches, you turn the dimmer switch to make it uh, in your house, to make your light brighter, dimmer, whatever the case may be. That's how it works. And just in case y'all curious, here's the part number for Model Zone PS133, your last brand. Those of you who haven't seen the oil pressure sending unit video that I'm talking about, I'll put a link down below in the description or up in the corner. There'll be a pop-out card that you guys can check out. Now, after seeing the inside of an oil pressure sending unit, seeing that it's a potentiometer or otherwise known as a variable resistor, whatever nerdy name you want to name it, seeing that you got that little copper arm that slides back and forth inside there that varies the resistance that gets sent to the gauge that therefore tells you how much oil pressure you got. The only thing I can assume is that there's bad spots within the side of the uh, switch where that copper arm slides back and forth. Now, 
with it burying, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Maybe it depended on how hot it got because heat causes things to expand. And if it causes it to expand, that arm could be coming out just enough that it was losing contact in certain places or who knows, you know? It's just one of those you know, weird incidents that would just happen occasionally. But the thing of it is, we gain knowledge. We know what's inside of it. Uh, we can understand why it didn't work. But there's one other thing I want to point out as well. You guys seen around that perimeter where I was grinding away, then I took the plasma cutter and chopped it away. More times than not, what happens with those oil pressure sitting units is um, you end up spewing oil all over the place. And, you know, you're sitting there and it's idling and you see an oil dripping or you got a very bad oil leak on that side of the engine, which is on the passenger side of the engine here, like I showed you on the previous video last week, which I'll link in the description and pop-up card. Uh, if you get a really bad oil leak around that area where I was grinding away, that's the most common way those uh, oil pressure sitting units go bad. So you change it out just like I showed you guys in the last video. So if you guys learned a little something from this video, hit me with a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave me some cool comments down below. Hey, sorry I missed that uh, insert last week, but the thing of it is, it actually turned out to be a better thing for me to drive it for a week to be sure that things were fixed, you know? So it came out to be a good thing. So again, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave some cool comments down below. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all.